kind of letting the the cards uh, unfold, we were talking and we said, you know what? We've gone through uh, sales and what stretching is. Podcast where we discuss all things business, including growth, strategy, and execution, as well as personal and professional development. Let's join Howie and Beast Mode in conversation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's kind of dig right in. Yeah, let's go. So job, job search profile. Uh, you know, we want to talk about setting up your job search on LinkedIn, uh, looking at your resume, your cover letter, and some work examples. I'm real passionate about that right there. The work examples. Yeah. Uh, the most important thing. I mean, Beesman, obviously, you're all, you're all over LinkedIn. Uh, you know, LinkedIn is the number one thing you can do to increase your job search success. I had explicitly three jobs that were greatly uh, influenced by LinkedIn myself. Um, uh, here's two of them right here. So uh, as you can see, here's the CEO of a company, another CEO of a company. And uh, these led to me, uh, this one went all the way to getting an offer. Nice. Uh, yeah. And then this one over here, I was a very finalist contender. Uh, that, it's, it's funny. They actually thought I would come in and change too much stuff. And so that's, mm-hmm. why, that's why I didn't get the job. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> I'm glad they thought I could change stuff. It's good. Yeah. Um, anyway, and they're right. I mean, they probably made the right decision because because <laughs> I would have done it in a kind way, but I really would have changed a lot for sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, couple couple things on LinkedIn. I mean, you know, when you when you have a proper LinkedIn profile and you post content, you get found. And here's two examples. Yeah. What about um, pillars of LinkedIn job search success, right? I think, first of all, create an amazing profile page. You know, I mean, you're big on social. You know, all about creating that profile page. Yeah, you, you got to have content on there uh, for uh, recruiters, for potential connections, for people who are just out looking around. You got to have something for them to see. So you, and it's not just work history. Um, I think whenever I'm on LinkedIn bouncing around, work history, current job is one of the last things that I look at. I'm really looking at, you know, what are you talking about? You know, do you have any insights that you're sharing that'll give me clues as to where you're at right now? Uh, So. Totally agree. Yep. And then, um, so build a large network of connections. There's no reason not to connect to people that you have worked with or you've gone to school with. Yeah. Yeah, That's. It helps them too. I mean, their network's growing, you know, your network's growing, their network's growing. So yeah. Yeah. Pretty positive thing. Yeah. I mean, you, you can get a little, little out there with it. Um, but again, you, it's part of, it's part of the metrics of how it works. So if you're not doing it, then it's a hindrance. Mm-hmm. So you have to do it, you know? And, and, you know, I know some people try to hack the algorithm. I actually know one person who was very successful doing that. Um, so it can be done. We're not really talking about hacking algorithms. We're just talking about <laughs> connecting to people you know. Or, you know, one yeah. thing you can do too, and actually this this kind of does tell us into it, but regularly post useful content that yeah. talks about who you are and what you think and things like that. You know, if you give, in fact, if you give ideas and thoughts and posts around the type of job you're going after, yeah. then you, you kind of get identified for that kind of job. That's what happened in the in those screenshots that I showed you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're trying to go for, you know, nursing management, right? You want to be like head of the nurses at the hospital, right? It's a pretty, pretty critical job, pretty sought after job. Um, you know, you better be talking about clinical outcomes and, you know, how to have, you know, increasing yeah. standard of care and increasing, you know, uh, accountability and reducing nurse burnout. I mean, you know what I mean? Posting yeah. about that makes you essentially yeah. a real insightful person that people in that category appreciate. And then when you go, you know, interview for XYG, XYZ job about that, yeah. they can see a lot about what you have to say. Yeah. Yeah. In advance, mm-hmm. you know, we, we talk about that a lot and what that it frustrates me is that oftentimes individuals put barriers in between themselves and the information that people are trying to seek. I shouldn't have to message you 
to find out who you are. I should just be able to go look, mm-hmm. you know? And so when somebody messages me and says, Hey man, why don't you tell me about yourself? What it tells me is you didn't even look, you know? Mm-hmm. So why I've given you all the content that tells you exactly who I am, what I do, what's important to me. It's all right there. And if you didn't take the time to look, then it, it's not worth my time to respond to you, mm-hmm. you know? And so whenever you do that on the front end, if I'm a CEO and I'm looking for a nurse manager, you know, I, sh- I don't want to have to waste time trying to call you. My time is valuable. And if I can just look at your post and say, man, she's got great content, mm-hmm. you know, then I, maybe I need to get this lady on the phone. You totally. Know? totally so, agree. so post that useful content. You know, if you're, if you're going for, you know, the head of regional warehouse distribution jobs, right? That's a very yeah. logistical job. Uh, and you generally have to hire people at a lower cost who have less skills and less experience. And so it's, you know, yeah. there's all kinds of dynamics with that. So post about your, post about your stuff because you're feeding the, the greater tribe, but you're also telling the tribe here, kind of who you are and how they can leverage you. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing is uh-huh. if you got a great, if you got a great idea, okay. And you've been sitting on it, waiting for this job opportunity to, to implement it. What if the idea sucks? You know, whenever I could just post it and then you have the whole world of the internet on LinkedIn to, to say, hey, man, we tried that over here and this is the results we have, you know, more power to you. But, you know, we tried that it worked better if you use this. Well, now it just made my idea even better whenever I go to that, you know, as opposed to just walking in there holding something that somebody's already gone through the minds that I'm sure you're going to talk about, Love you know. That. So, that. so what about setting up your LinkedIn? Just kind of like, what's the one-on-one? Okay, so if you go into your profile on LinkedIn, yeah. first of all, I'm just going to do it by clicks. Uh, <laughs> LinkedIn basically guides you on what you can add. So it's not yeah. that, I just met with someone two Sundays ago, uh, yeah. Richard, and I just was like, listen, it's kind of a, they take kind of a wizard approach. You can, you just yeah. go, go fill out. They say, do you want to add this? Do you want to add that? And then you just do it, right? Um, but try to have yeah. a professional looking picture. And I'm not saying my picture is awesome here, <laughs> but it was the best I could find. So I mean, yeah. I did, I at least took the time to try to find it, you know, one that was okay. Yeah. Um, use a creative title. So this is one that I used during my job yeah. search because I kind of boiled who I think about myself. Like this is kind of some, some tendencies that come out of me. So I, yeah, I put that in my title during my job search, at least now it's something else. Yeah. Uh, the about section is, is kind of a, it's most of LinkedIn. I think all of LinkedIn actually is simple text. So you don't get to put like a lot of graphics. Actually, I guess if you post from your phone, you can use emojis. Yeah. But um, aside from that, it's fairly simple text. And so the about section is just a bunch of text, but you can talk about, you know, some basic thoughts about why you and stuff like that, which is, yeah. I mean, again, you might as well use it. Yeah. And when they say why you, they're not asking for a novel, you know, nobody's reading, you know, a couple of paragraphs. You need to be simple to the point. Honestly, less is more, you know, because again, your content's hopefully going to fill in any gaps because you're posting. Love that. That's a good perspective. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, it's not the why you area or the about area is not really your where you're yeah. posting. That's more like some summary thoughts. Uh, your work history, make sure that your work history on LinkedIn matches your resume. Uh, <laughs> use bullets more than paragraphs. Yes. You know, which I'm guilty yes. of. I'm, I made all these mistakes. So I'm, oh, yeah. I, I, I get it. Right. It's very possible to write too much. Uh, yeah. Share your key responsibilities, but also on your LinkedIn. And, and on your resume too, have some impactful accomplishments, have some things that you, you tried and, and, you know, some tasks or projects you worked on, that kind of thing. Cause we don't care the sheer facts that you work there and the dates and basic <laughs> responsibilities is a little dull. So share like a yeah. little, can you share a two sentence story? Uh, can you bulletize yeah. a quick, you know, a difference that you made? That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody told me, a recruiter told me using numbers and percentages really pops in your uh, resume and on your LinkedIn. So I started adding more numbers and percentages. It looks more real than just, just the story by itself. Yeah. So that was pretty good advice. So I changed my everything to, you know, incorporate some of that. Yep. 
Also, mm-hmm. LinkedIn is a search engine. LinkedIn is really a recruiting search engine. It's part of what it part of what it is. So you, yes. you want to put keywords in there about who you are. So if you're a nurse director or a chief chief nursing officer, um, you know, in that particular example, or that that regional warehouse executive, I mean, you have to put keywords like for the regional warehouse executive, you have to put like, you know, um, logistics effort, you know, a logistics expert and you know warehousing and you know stocking and distribution you know all those whatever the keywords are for your industry you got to make sure that you're searchable and you're findable um yeah in that way very true even having uh, um so i know sometimes you know we'll get caught in a, a particular business or field you know where i'm doing a a nurse management position right but what i'm actually doing is i'm doing the chief nurse officer's role and I'm doing this other role. Well, you need to somehow have that speculated as well. So your title may have been nurse manager, but your duties included these other, th- these uh, underneath these other titles as well. And there's a way to kind of um, slide those in there as well. Again, the verbiage is, is helpful because these recruiters are going to use search engines. Um, they're typing in specific keywords like how he's just talking about. Mm-hmm. So for sure, make sure you fill out your education. Some of this is basic, you know, what's great about, you know, we're giving you the one-on-one advice, but honestly, LinkedIn is going to prompt you with these things, education. And if you have, you know, if if you don't have a full college degree, but you have some other education, you know, you should put that in there. (laughs) Also other areas like licenses, certifications, accomplishments, interests, just use everything possible because it kind of enriches who you are. Um, there, yeah. you know, there, there's special projects. There's, there's a projects field. You can add cool projects and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, real quick, real quick. How far did you go back with work history and with education? Um, do you include your date? Yes or no? Um, I don't include my date on education yeah. uh, because of ageism. Cause mine's, you know, I'm not, I'm not young anymore. Smart. Um, yeah. so I, I removed dates and then also I, sort of consolidate some of my really early career yeah. and I either don't list it or I consolidate it uh, yep. to kind of bring myself a little bit up current. So unfortunately, ageism is a subconscious thing. It's not usually conscious. Yep. And so it will affect you if you're not a, you know, if you're not under 40, then you may want to be careful about going too, too far back uh, because they need to judge you on your merits and not a new yep. age. Yep. And let's just say you worked at um, General Motors for 25 years, 30 years, something like that. Yep. And you've and you've always worked there. That's the only place you've worked. And you know, you, they gave you a settlement, so you took it, you took your pension, and but you're still looking for work now. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not include all 30 years. I would include like the last 10 or 15 in just those specific roles. And then whenever they run a background check, they're going to find the 30 and that's okay. Yeah. And you can even, you know, when you're verbal with them and, you know, you can give them more context, that's good, but yeah, yeah you, you can get excluded Yes, that way for sure. And that's, that's too bad, but I actually saw it happen a couple times to me. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm not, you know, I'm not under 40 anymore. LinkedIn set up 202. Um, Make sure there's a few things to do. What, what I really told what I told Richard a couple of weeks ago was you need to go through the settings under your profile. Go to settings and look at every single button and make sure that mm. it's set to open. Because I found it when I in my very early job search in the pandemic in um, 2020, I realized that my some of my settings were kind of partially closed, so I wasn't okay. the full internet wasn't seeing me. And that's dangerous because okay. you're looking for a job. Yeah. yeah. So you have to set them to really, you know, so there's a few things you can do. There's, there's an open to work status that you can set yes. and that makes yep. you really searchable. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and then within that same feature, you actually yeah. can list the titles that you're looking for. You can choose up to five titles that you're looking for, which is yeah. good. And then people will kind of, it does force you to kind of narrow down what you're looking for. Um, yeah. but it's really, it's really critical because that becomes part of what recruiters can search on. So if it's like, yeah. you know, chief nursing officer, like, 
that yeah. obviously should be one of your, or one of yours <laughs> or nursing executive right that that'd be a great yeah. one for that one yeah um stuff like that but these are this is a key area and uh, if you guys need to pause and rewind this then please do that because that's among the more important parts of the linkedin side yes and by the way, also, we were we, we talked about this last week, guys. Um, and if you didn't see part one, then please go check it out. But this, we love everybody's on, on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify and everything. But this is a series that's so visual. Like we're going through a PowerPoint right now. <laughs> you might yeah. consider checking this out on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Might yeah. be good. There's yes. just way more. It's hard to really cover everything, especially last week was so technical uh, to, to hear yeah. all that audible only would be hard. But um all right so next, next thing is build your linkedin network make sure you connect with every former coworker, boss family member neighbor person you know just again take take you know maybe a couple hours or more and yeah. because here's the problem if you if your network is under 150 connections you may be ignored they're like what's wrong with this person i'm not kidding so i will occasionally get connected to by someone who has you know 10 or 15 um followers and usually those are scammers not kidding i had yeah i had someone connected me with like one or two followers last week and she was clearly a scammer uh person i don't know what was happening with that uh but even if they're yeah, honestly even if they're under like 50 it's very sketchy and okay. and then it, and then if it's between 50 and 150 it's just like well this is not a very business savvy person right yes. and so if you you know if you can I mean, even my daughter in college has, I think, 250 already. So you really need to think about building your network, connecting to all your friends, family, coworkers, bosses, because the optics of that lend you credibility, right? If you, if you can get to a few hundred, that would be just fine. You don't have to go crazy, but, you know, above 150 especially is a good, a good thing. Uh, it's a good, it's a good idea to pay for a LinkedIn premium tier. You get 30 days free anyway. There's a job search tier, and the first time that you do the trial, it's a free trial for a month, and you get um, unlimited um, searching. It's way more open searching. You also get yeah. the ability to send email messages to people that you don't know, like a recruiter, a hiring manager, that kind of thing. And so there, it, it's it's very helpful, and it also gives you the premium badge, which kind of looks nice on you kind of adds credibility <laughs> to you yeah those yeah. all those little psychological tricks are um you know what the problem with all of us is that we don't have it's not it's not like we're we're against you but we don't have a lot of time so we have to skim so looking for the, yeah. the LinkedIn premium badge looking for your number of followers to see if it's more than you know 20 um yeah. stuff like that really are ways that we can judge you really quickly yeah. Yeah. I know one thing for me that I changed, um, I think it may have been right before the pandemic is for me, when you view my profile, the option to connect is no longer there. The option to follow is. Um, and so the following provides more value for both sides, at least initially. You can still, there's still like the little button where you click it and then you can connect. Um, but again, at this stage, you're just you're casting a wide net. And so you want to be able to maximize that. I think LinkedIn has a, a limit of last time I think it was around 40 a day. Yeah. As long as you're getting some kind of traction, if 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 you get too many, if you get up in the thousands of just pending, um, then they'll then they'll shut you down until, shut you, you, down. until you get some acceptance. <laughs> you hit that as well. Yeah, yeah. during my job search, I I was you know, just fighting for my survival. I was trying to get a job during a time when people were shedding millions of jobs. And so I was hitting those limits sometimes by yeah. being aggressive. Yeah, no doubt. So yeah. all these are great tips. And, and by the way, guys, listen, I got it. We listen, we have 150 slides to cover across probably five weeks, something like that, or six, six weeks. And I just, I want to encourage you that each one of these lessons was learned usually the hard way and usually under, yeah. under under a lot of pressure because I'm, you know, my wife has a job, but I'm the way bigger earner in our family. And we were under pressure. Yeah. And we did generate a lot of debt during my yeah. many months of being out of uh, out of work. We just finally paid that off 
not terribly long ago. And so when I, when I say these are really good tips, I mean, they're literally precious in the sense that they cost blood and sweat for me. And yeah. so I just want you to avoid that. Right. And so, but I also want to say there's a balance, which is you don't have to do all of it. Right. Yeah. I'm kind of a crazy person and, and I did do all of them. Uh, and there are a few of you will, but I feel like even if you took a third of these ideas, you're going to be like in the upper, you know, decent, you know, you'll be more competitive. Than, yeah. Do something. Yeah. I mean, it's here. It's free. We're just publishing this for free. I'll probably <laughs> charge for it someday. <laughs> But for, but for now, it's free to, to at least our listeners. Um, yeah. link, LinkedIn settings and privacy. We talked about this a little bit because um, I forgot what's in here. Um, make sure privacy settings are wide open so people can find you. Again, I discovered on accident that mine were partly yeah. closed. Um, and I have this awesome little animation here. But you basically click on here and then go to settings and privacy. Yeah. And then there's all these menus. And I told Richard two weeks ago, he should go through all of these one by one and just make sure he, you know, leverages all the openness, all the search capability. Um, yeah, here, here, check every single one. I personally found, yeah, exactly. See, I'm telling my own story here. I should rehearse. <laughs> We're just doing this spitball on this instead of rehearsing. Um, LinkedIn, yeah. rec LinkedIn recommendations is really good as well. Um, I have kind of a lot of them because I sought, I sought these out from a lot of coworkers um, over two different job searches. So I kind of generated a lot. Uh, and I've also given actually a, a, quite a number as well. And, I, and I've given one or two more since, since I took the screenshot. Um, but it's really good. It means it's, it's special when you give someone a recommendation. It means a lot to them. I gave uh, Brennan one recently about a week and a half ago. He was just like, man, that made my day. And I was just like, dude, you deserve it. Like one of the best coworkers I've had ever. And um, so I wanted to encourage him, but, it, but also people will do this for you. You have to ask them. And so I would just encourage you to ask them. Um, it's, it's somewhere in your profile. Um, oh yeah, well, here you go. Okay, so, <laughs> so here I am. So by the way, where I am in my profile, so I'm on my profile page and I scroll down to the bottom. That's where recommendations are. And you just click ask yeah. for a recommendation and then you you have a little search engine so that's pretty yeah. easy i really yeah. should rehearse this because i have it all <laughs> i have it all like annotated. it's all there it's all yeah. there it's uh, okay and, and what's good is like i said if people watch it on youtube literally you could it's have this going time. and then just follow it <laughs> honestly that'd be a good way to do this too you know what i mean yeah, oh, on yeah. YouTube, just pull it up and then pause it and go do what we said yeah. and then come back. I mean, that's kind of, it's almost like a checklist that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you really should ask 12, 50 people minimum to get, you know, to recommend you and say something nice about you. And then yeah. with that, you, you'll probably get about a third of those to do it. And, and that would be great. If you can get seven or eight, I think that's really awesome. Yeah. No doubt. And, you know, we talk about the tribe. So on this podcast, we talk about this tribe concept. And um, there's something in us genetically where we outsource some of our decision-making and our risk assessment and our idea generation to the crowd. And so the reason why recommendations are good, if you, if you have those recommendations done, like we talked about, is because you're tapping into that genetic uh, DNA-driven um, instinct that all of us have to look for the opinions of others. Just like if I told you on, you know, on your Facebook or something um, about XYZ product, you would probably believe me. And, and when you're looking for a similar solution, you'd probably go buy that one or at least look at it. And that's because we have this innate um, way of sort of outsourcing advice to our to the social network, to the tribe, basically. So get your recommendations in. Also, um, this is one I pulled from someone that I'm connected to. I don't remember who it was, um, but this, you know, they do some, um, some kind of coaching, fitness coaching and, you know, nutrition coaching. And so people have given them endorsements. And so, um, you know, those are a good way to, to also have people to, at a glance, see what people, what people think about your skill sets. Um, step number one is add skills to your profile. So go add um, leadership or go add nursing or go add, um, phlebotomy or go add um, you know clinicals 
or you know um you know yeah. bedside bedside manner you know <laughs> cpr <laughs> go add all yeah. that stuff to your profile uh and then send messages to a bunch of your connections asking them to endorse those skills right and they'll they'll do whatever they want to do. Not everybody will do it. So it's not like you're yeah. gaming this naturally. Yeah. So that's kind of a good any thoughts on kind of the endorsements or the recommendation side of this. Yeah. Again, if you if you're on the active job search, you have to be careful you're not cross contaminating who you're reaching out to for for endorsements and for referrals and things like that and also who you're looking to find employment with so just be a little careful and again all this isn't i don't think how you're intending for somebody to do all of this in one city no way so this took me so weeks to learn all this so this would at least yeah. take you days to put it into practice yeah and so maybe i mean again ideally you're you're sending out invites and connections and then you're sending out yeah. Uh, messages to prospective employers and things like totally. that um and yeah, then, don't let it drown you i love that yeah yeah so so there's, a, there's yeah. a little bit of a pace to it as well yeah and i think that only you know at this stage of my life am i starting to understand pace um and doing things a little bit at a time so i, I really like that you brought that up because it took me a little too long to learn that one pacing is is great love that man thank you for that yeah. So resume is uh, big. There are a lot of formats on online that are that are good. Um, Richard found one. I don't even know where he found it, but it was pretty good. I didn't. All I did is tweet. I'll just add some content and give him some thoughts. But it was good. Yeah. Um, many available formats online. The purpose is really to list your work experience and education, but also the purpose is to get attention. By the way, um, use bullets and not paragraphs. Two pages is best. One page look you look too thin. Honestly, so I had Richard make yeah. his longer because I want it to bleed over into two pages. But also, if you could try to not go to three pages, that would be best. So yeah. that two-page sweet spot, it's my opinion, but yeah. that's just my opinion. Yeah, my opinion is a one-page cover letter, one-page uh, resume. Because basically, you're doing the same thing. I want to shove as much content, the really important stuff on the front page. And even if you don't get to the resume, Maybe you saw something in there you liked. Mm -hmm. um, and really my my thing for having the resume is if you're going to apply for a LinkedIn job, you want to have the resume that's already on your profile. It makes it a ton easier yeah. when you apply to just have it there because there's a little Smart. checkbox that you just check. So it's use LinkedIn resume. Mm -hmm. you know? yep. And if you don't have one, then you got to upload it every time. Yeah. And I also, I did upload my resume, my cover letter and some work samples and I've turn them into featured items. So that's another thing that's a good trick. I think I have that on here later on. I probably do. Um, <laughs> Next slide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have an eye-catching hero story. I got this from a recruiter. This is a really cool idea. So at the top, I put a really catching story on my yeah. resume. And so I think that was a great advice from him. And um, I got good feedback on that, by the way. Once I did it, yeah. I put a really, just, uh, you know, you're the hero of your own story. So yeah. What's something that you overcame? What's something that you accomplished or both, right? So I thought that yeah. was cool. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying I invented all these ideas. I gathered from a lot of people <coughs> um, and I you know, incorporated some of them. And if, if I if I use them, then they're in this deck. If I didn't, then you'll never, you'll never hear about them. But hopefully I also use the best ones. Um, yeah. You need, you need your company names, your employment dates your titles, and then bullets of responsibilities and key accomplishments. I know this seems really easy, but it's also, you might as well cross check your resume to make sure you're not missing some of that. Yeah. So I have to kind of assume that, like that's that's 101, right? So I have to assume that people coming right out of college are gonna see this. And so I had to put a few of the basic things in there and that's what you want on your resume for sure. Yeah. Um, again, we've talked about using numbers and percentages to illustrate success. Uh, we talked about, we already talked about this, matching your content to your LinkedIn profile. Um, I think it's fitting that we put this in, on the LinkedIn section as well as in the resume section. Um, I don't think that's too bad for duplication. Uh, there's a tip though. Uh, if you have two or three different types of roles you're going after, because remember we talked about under mindset last week, we talked yeah. about 
listen, go for the, the exact job that your sort of experience would imply, but then also a step away from that, you know, things that are complementary to what you did. Those are okay. And people sometimes will hire you for those as well. So anyway, if you go for those, then you need to prepare different resumes that are sort of custom for that. So for yeah. example, if you're going for, um, you know, chief nursing officer, but you also are very interested in, um, you know, being the head of a lab or something, right? You can see how that would be some crossover. So you, you want to make sure you would, for that resume, you, you focus on the lab and the research side of your job and put that yeah. into the more. So kind of like have, I think I had about three, I had two or three for sure, different yeah. ones. I had like sales leadership and then I had channel leadership and then I had um, inside sales management as well. So. Yeah. I think where, where, where I've seen it a lot in the past is if somebody has technical and management experience where um, you're going to highlight one or the other. So if you're going, you know, you're saying, well, I could do either one. I'm comfortable with either one. Then on the, the roles that are more technical, you're highlighting the technical aspects of things you've done. And then on the management ones, you're not alleviating it, but that's not the first bullet point in every single one. That's not what you're highlighting. So, yeah, it's not that much work and you have to reuse it a lot. You know, this yeah. is a high leverage thing. Yeah. Uh, another tip LinkedIn has many people who will help you with, it, with uh, your resume. This is worth an investment, but don't break your budget because this this training is not going to get deeply into resume. So I'm just saying, yeah. you know, if you want to pay someone $100 to yeah. help you with your resume, that isn't a terrible investment, really. Yeah. Plenty of people give you free feedback anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, recruiters will do that a lot, actually. Yeah. And if a recruiter grabs your resume, um, oftentimes they're going to make adjustments. Ask them for the one that they adjusted. I want to see what you did. So email it back to me. Good idea. Because sometimes they'll add in some good fluff or some good content just because they, they do that all day long. And so I want to see it, you know. I like that. So the cover letter is if you are a millennial or Gen Z, you are probably not as familiar with the cover letter. It's a little bit of an old school thing. Um, but historically, job seekers always provided a personal letter of introduction, a cover letter. So in this case, I made up, this is my actual cover letter. However, I, I never <laughs> did talk to Ford. I just made that up for this uh, training. Uh, but a cover letter, you know, it's, it's a little less common, but many people still expect it because it's not like you're only recruiting, you're only getting recruited by millennials and Gen Z, okay? So, you know, a lot, and even if you are, they probably don't see a lot of cover letters these days. And so it'll be, you know, a nice signal that you're maybe a little more diligent. So create a warm, friendly, you see how, you see how short this is? And there's some color, you know, some little bullets, a little thoughts, a little picture, a little let's grow together. So, you know, you can spend, <laughs> you know, a lot of time on this. And all you really have to customize is, unless, you, unless the job is really unique and different, just customize right here. So you can spend two hours on making this thing as perfect as you know how, because you're gonna reuse it every single time you send your resume. So it's kind of worth it. A lot of these are high leverage things that we're yeah. talking about. There are numerous templates online for cover letters. Um, feel free to take a screenshot of mine if you like this idea or something, if it's inspiration. Um, yeah. Um, also, create several work examples. So, we talked. To, Bisto talked a little bit about. Listen, we you know, we want to go a little bit deeper. We, we want to understand your experience a little bit deeper, right? So, another way of, of sort of understanding you better is by creating work examples. Now, when you work for a company, it's a good idea to send excerpts and examples of your work home occasionally and file them in your email folders under work or something right i do that and that's because work stuff happens and you might suddenly get laid off one day right and you'll have some work examples at home that you can anonymize and then show what you did to somebody right because your work yeah. doesn't care like they're gonna if they let you go 
they're going to let you go without any warning. They're not going to have you, let you have any of your files. And all the three years you gave them, uh, you'll have nothing to show for it to the next employer. So try to send some stuff home when you have a job occasionally, number one. Number two, there are ways of creating work examples, which we'll get into. So first of all, prepare four to five solid work examples that help hiring managers understand your experience and your ability, okay? These could be things like a presentation, mm. maybe a tool you created, yeah. a problem you solved, a program you created. So that means like some kind of a process or a program. By the way, it could be a software program. That's not what I meant here, but it could be that for sure. Yeah. Uh, although if you did, if you show that, then you probably have code that you shouldn't have. So maybe a software program would be, that probably would be a bad example actually. Um, because that's IP protection, right? So you gotta be careful about that. So anyway, but a program would be like, you know, that nurse, that chief nursing, nurse, nursing officer created a retention program and here's how it worked. And, it, and she helped to, um, here she helped to increase nurse retention by 30% over a period of two years. You know, that's a great program, but yeah. we, don't, we don't know unless you write it up, write something up about that. Yeah. Show some creativity, you know, um, something that, you know, Beast Mode has this really cool thing that he's done with systematic outreach to use sort of uh, insights and relationships to develop relationships with business owners uh, targeted at growing business with them. And yeah. so that's a cool program. Like he'll have that for the rest of his life. But if we don't, if he doesn't write that up, then we won't know, right? And so we want to sure. take some time. This is a few hours. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, you know, also you will, you'll feel, by the way, can I just say something too? Looking for a job can be a little discouraging. So writing up some of your work history like this is kind of an encouraging thing to do. Yeah. Like, oh, I did that. Like, that's cool. Yeah, it so, goes back to mindset. Mm. Yeah. You're focusing on a positive thing that you did in the past, you know, not, not the outcome of whatever happened. Mm. Um, and so they, these are just simple ways of taking a little bit of time but it, it it creates a warm welcome on the front end because i already know you I, I send your work examples i see some of your content i already know you i just need to talk to you on the phone you know and confirm what i already see problem is is that i, I don't want somebody to have to try to figure it out it, it just nowadays with the with the volume of competition it's your key differentiator, you know, right here. Totally and it's free. Agree. It's free. You know, people, totally people agree. have the mindset of, hey, once I get them on the phone, I'm going to blow them away. Well, what if they never get you on the phone? Mm -hmm. Why don't I just blow you away? And if you like it, even if you steal it, who cares? I blew you away. You know, I'm oh, just yeah. sowed a good, I just sowed a good seed. Mm -hmm. I changed your company. You know, that's okay. I did that. I created a comp plan for a company and they didn't hire me. And I literally created a calculator that would do all the comp plan for them. Literally created a calculator. And I, I literally thought, you know, what if I don't get this job? And then I thought to myself, that's okay. I just got more smart and more capable from building this tool. Yeah. And that was the company I was a finalist with that said they thought I'd be disruptive, that, that I'd change too much and that they had a, long, a lot of long-term people. So, you know, they took my work and probably used it and good for them. Yeah. Uh, but I, I got smarter and now I have that, that work example forever. So yeah. uh, customer impact example, for example, you know, I worked and I did this for customer and it improved their business by 24% in an, only 18 months. And here's how I did it. Da, da, da. You know what I mean? Like there's so many things, like, isn't this cool? Like you, you really have done a lot, right? Yeah. Even if you worked at McDonald's, like, what did you do there? Like, okay, yeah. I got the award for best attendance. Cool. Like, that's, I really respect that. Like, attendance is a big deal. Yeah. So, or I, a customer was choking and I, you know, saved them from that incident. Uh, and then I got him a doctor and I got him help. I mean, that's a big deal. Like, that's a cool story. Like, wow, you're the kind of person who jumps in and helps a stranger medically like that. That's unbelievable. You know what I mean? So it's like, first of all, let's all look for courage examples in our, in our lives and careers and opportunities to make a difference anywhere we can. Um, but then also, 
whatever difference we have made, let's document some of that stuff because job search purposes, I mean, yeah, it really works for, the, for that. A compliment. Yeah. Also, when you get kudos from your boss, kudos from a customer, email that stuff home because I, I do this sometimes and then I have a small collection of them that I can, can <laughs> share with a customer, you know, and I, I crop them and I anonymize them and all the fun, you know, you gotta do, what, gotta do what's right. So you gotta anonymize all your stuff if they're from work. Um, but, you know, put those into maybe a slide, a PowerPoint slide and then show people like, hey, this is some of the stuff that people have said about me because you don't know me, it's just like Beast Mode said a minute ago. He's like, you might be great, but we might never know. Yeah. You document and share some of this. We might never know because we're not going to call you. I have 40 yeah. other people who are, who are applying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if, and if you, you got a compliment on there from, from Joe, what if the person who's looking at your profile knows Joe? Hmm. And then they're like, man, I'm just going to call Joe and figure this out. Yeah. And they're going to do that. Yeah. They're going to look, they're going to look for people that you know in common and call. I mean, I yeah. know because I've hired people. And so I know that's what I do at least. You know? Yeah. And then um, create a one page write up of this is what I told Richard to do two Sundays ago when I met with him. I have to check on how this is going actually. Because um, <laughs> I can't let people go. I just have to, I have to mother hen everybody all the time. Um, but I created a one page write up and I, I think I'll show it here in a minute. I think it's probably, I'm knowing me, it's probably in this deck. I haven't seen this full deck in a many months, honestly. Um, so I'm just doing this out of on the fly. But um, yeah, I think I have a, a copy of one of these in here that will show. And sure, <laughs> sure enough. Yeah. <laughs> sure enough. Um, so here's a process document that I created, which, um, which is useful. This is for a sales thing to help you plan your sales outreach. Auto email one, call, auto email two, call, auto email, you know. So it, this literally will build, this little spreadsheet will actually build a, a sales outreach thing. So I, I included this in, in some of my work samples. Um, this right here was a training that I created uh, about <coughs> utilizing pain and gain in the sales world. And so this is a, a training that I really have. It's a 50 page training on, on selling. We should do that sometime, by the way. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, maybe we do that. Um, so anyway, so you know, presentation you created like this or training. Um, here's one a problem that I solved. This is a really cool little tool that I made for customer success people to uh, increase the adoption of their customers, and, and it's just really cool. And, and what this was, um, we didn't use it as much as I would have liked. Um, but it's a cool, it's a, I think it's an inspirational example of what's possible in customer success. Um, this is a cool event that we did when I was on site at a famous gaming retailer. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of them, um, but we did this great, uh, we did this great on site and we put our software on the screen and did some great stuff. And Daniel here was uh, helping them out. So I, you know, some screenshots of that event. This is from their real screens. Um, and then here, yeah, here's a summary of work example. I talked about creating a one pager. So um, this is my earliest version of the one pager. And I don't know why I cut it off, but I did. So, um, and then here is, a, is the version I created in 2020, partly based on this and partly some new stuff. Uh, and obviously I'm not gonna read this here now, although you're welcome to pause this and read it, it you know, cause there was kind of a structure to it. It was kind of like, um, you know, title in a certain color so it pops and stands out. And then, you know, a very few sentences. See how I'm trying to use statistics here, some of that kind of examples. Uh, they're pretty short. There's a little space between them. Everything's very uniform so that to your eye, it looks pleasing and you're kind of, um, you know, it's, e it's easy ish to read. Um, this one here actually was interesting too. I have kind of a title and then a company name. And then I have, you know, here's what I did and here's the results. So it's a couple mm. different format ideas. I think your format can be whatever you want it to be. But the point is, if you never send anything home from work, you can still do this just out of your head. What did yeah. you do? And create a little document. Yeah. Email compliments or work examples. So I anonymized these, but these are some little uh, work examples that I, you know, from different jobs. And so I, I kept those, I, sent, I emailed those home. If you don't, if you haven't, if you've never emailed work compliments home, then you won't have these. So it is kind of important 
when you have a kudos or whatever that you send that yeah. stuff home. So those were good. I ended up putting those into a deck in one, in one situation. Um, feature resume. So we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, any, any of the documents that we talked about, like these, for example, or your resume and your cover letter, like all that stuff, when you're on LinkedIn, you can feature them. And so that it puts them kind of at the top and it gives them prominence. So when people are browsing you and recruiters have found you and stuff like that, they can easily pull up your latest resume and your work examples. And it's, again, it's not a lot of work to just upload it to LinkedIn and feature it. It's just not a lot of work. Yeah. Here's how to do it. Just go to your profile, dot, 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 feature on top of profile. You have to create a post and then you can feature it. That's how, that's the process. So it'll be like a post with your resume, a post with a cover letter, and then you can feature them. Um, and then here's what it looks like. See, and they can just kind of scroll through all your stuff. Um, yeah. So I found that to be really helpful. Yeah. It's similar to how on Twitter and on Facebook, you can pin something okay. to the, to the top, same thing in Instagram, how you can highlight your stories uh certain activities so it's very similar so guys you're already doing it it's it's just a different different platform love it yeah the key is making it as easy as possible now how about how to destroy a job opportunity do we have a few more minutes <laughs> yeah how many minutes a do we have a couple not many yeah not okay. much okay all right let's do maybe the five minute we'll just cut it off you can just stop me um actually hang on let me just because we're we're doing this in a very chill way. So let's just find out how many we have left here. Oh, really perfect. We have like two slides. Cool. cool. All right, good. You know the Howling Beast mode pro but pro blah, broadcast is very chill. <laughs> so we don't mind showing you our, our homework here. So how to, <laughs> how to destroy a job opportunity. I never really had this happen because I was really careful. Um, but I was the reason I was careful is because I knew this could happen. So uh, your social media, your blogs, your other online history can disqualify you and you will never know. Mm. So go through your, your past posts and all the places you exist online and clean up <laughs> things like if you've ever been rude, political, argumentative, <laughs> or otherwise, <laughs> then you need to really get rid of that stuff, right? First of all, it's not great to have it on in the first place, right? Um, pictures that don't put you in a good light, you should get rid of as well. Uh, when in doubt, if you're not sure, then delete it, is what I would say. Um, also, you ought to be posting positive things anyway, just for your own mental health. Uh, but also, it puts you in a good light. So add some positive posts while you're at it. Um, video, I think this maybe is the last, uh, second to last slide here. Uh, but video interview planning, you cannot believe what I have seen on video interview. So a lot of people nowadays, by the way, your first or second interview even though we are not in a pandemic shutdown as much, there's still a lot of video in interviewing going on because it's easier. Oh, yeah. 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 Cost effective. Totally cost effective. So, yeah. so first of all, set up a Zoom free video conferencing account and then see what your interview space looks like on video. Right? Just fire up a Zoom, see what it looks behind looks like behind you and then plan to improve it. Yeah. Think about the impression that your space gives. Plan for good lighting. Like I've got a small, it's not the best one, but I've got a ring light above my head right now. And that's something I learned the hard way is that my lighting was terrible in here. Um, have things behind you that put you in a favorable light or at least interesting. Like I've got that sword behind me. Um, yeah. That's not because I'm a sword person. It's because it was a souvenir, but it is just fun. It's just, yeah. it's, just you know, it's just interesting. Yeah, um, Phoebe Howe. Got, I've got my little robot. Yeah, exactly. Behind me yeah. as well. Just fine little Star Wars thing. Uh, doesn't mean that you need to put nerd stuff behind you. Um, <laughs> I, one of the best backgrounds I've seen was my mm -hmm. friend Paola. And she has like this really nice little scene and a picture. I think she lit a candle. I was like, that's so pleasing and nice and calming and, and professional, you know? And so <laughs> think about just like little tiny details. But if someone notices those details, then they'll notice that you are the kind of person who have put that much thought into something. And if they don't notice it, they will still subconsciously, yeah. you know, have a good you feeling know. about it. You know you did it. Yeah, 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 true. So to help your confidence, yeah, it's, it's, 
which let's face it, during a job search, <laughs> we could use a lot of that. Yeah. So have things behind you that put you in a favorable light, you know, some books, a picture, you know, you, you guys can look at your Zoom background and see what it looks like, but it's always shocking when I see like the bed behind him and it's unmade. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I recently saw that. Um, declutter your space too. That's easy. Um, choose a flattering camera position. You might not want to be like neck up, like here, let's look at your double chin. <laughs> You know, like just have it above, like you can see where mine is, right? Like it's purposely not double chin land. It's purposely above. And also, yeah. by the way, when you're, uh, make sure that your camera is kind of center of your monitor so that when you're looking like right now, I'm like when I'm looking at you in my <laughs> camera, it's kind of natural versus like, I've seen people like really recently, even at my work where their camera's in one position, their monitor's in another. So you're, you're never looking eye to eye. Right. So plan for see how this gentleman here is looking right at you. That's perfect. Right. So as close to that straight on view as you can is really, really good. Um, also, it's, you can listen, you can wear cargo shorts, but you ought to you ought to have a nice top on. You, ought, you really ought to have I have cargo shorts over right now, but I've got a decent top on. So just try to have, you know, you be as chill as you want on the bottom, but on your torso up plan for, you know, a little nicer, a little nicer look. And, and, and by the way, things like the lighting. It's a pain in the butt. I mean, honestly, mine is still not perfect. And um, and I've spent time on it, you know, but, you know, there was a case to be made that I should even have somebody come in who, who does that professionally, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Um, and frankly, a lot of our listeners are, are audio, most of them actually. Um, so that's kind of it. So profile recap, um, a great LinkedIn profile is critical. We, we covered a lot today, uh, yeah. but a, a great LinkedIn profile way back in that training uh, is critical to get you noticed. <laughs> connect to everyone you know on LinkedIn, uh, set up your resume and cover letter, post those and feature them on your LinkedIn and, uh, and then work on your video background and your appearance. And uh, yeah, definitely good luck. And by the way, listen, um, we would be more than happy to talk to somebody who is going through a job search or a, or a career transition. We're yeah. interested in really anything on the business and career side of things. So just hit us up and Beast Mode, what, um, if they want to take us up on that, What's a good way to maybe reach out? Yeah, you can email us at howieandbeastmode at gmail.com or on any of our social posts or anything like that. You can just comment. We'll reach back out. So. I love it. Yeah, Beast Mode is uh, the very diligent social guy. So it'll probably be him. Um, yeah. I don't even know where our social stuff is. I'm just kidding. But but <laughs> not by much. Um, but anyway, hey, Beast Mode, thanks for letting me. I know I talked more. You know, obviously I created the content. It's hard to... You know, I try to find spots, but you have so much to, to, to add and, and to so much value to bring. So thanks for letting me share this with the ladies and gentlemen out there. And, uh, and yeah, I just, I hope it helps somebody, you know, if they use it, it will. Yeah, for sure. That's good stuff. The whole series that we're in right now is strategy for growth. And we thought we'd talk a little bit about, and kind of just bat it back and forth, uh, the idea of research in developing your content.